Let's go to South Australia. We know there they voted against the, the, the voice. James, they voted against the voice with a higher percentage out of South Australia than the national average. Doesn't matter. The Premier there is pushing on with a state version of the voice anyway. But what I find very disturbing, there's a debate now erupting about the eligibility of some of the Indigenous candidates to stand for the South Australian voice. And so we're having this whole debate about who really is Aboriginal or Aboriginal enough, so it's a race-based assessment. This is not going to bring Australians together. Well, and isn't it interesting, Peter, this is exactly what you and I and a lot of other people talked about during the debate for the National Voice, for the Canberra Voice, um, that there would be a whole fight over who was eligible to sit on this, this thing. Now, I guess on one level, you know, we can be glad that this is con confined to South Australia and let it be a warning to other states and jurisdictions that are out toying with this sort of the thing themselves. I know Victoria is, I think on some level, New South Wales is. Um, so all of that said, this is, I just don't think, has any place in a country like Australia where the mm. whole idea is that we don't identify, you know, as anything other than Australian for the purposes of whether or not you're allowed to vote or sit on a representative body to the government. What about this one, Caroline? Look, you know, last week I talked about uh, an NHS declaration out of the United Kingdom that breast milk... Uh, and trans women's milk, so chest milk produced by hormones, uh, was exactly the same. I don't think any woman who's fed a baby thinks it's necessarily exactly the same. Nope. But also uh, this, this insanity, related insanity in Queensland, you've got the Premier looking like he's lied to Parliament, forced to apologise yesterday. But at the same time, he is looking to amend abortion laws in that state, take out the word woman and put it in... Uh, replace it with person so that trans men are not embarrassed or offended when it comes to procuring an abortion. I mean, you're kidding me. Maybe the Premier needs to focus more on telling the truth in Parliament and not laughing when he's asked very serious questions about youth crime instead of this ridiculous gender, radical gender ideology stuff. Because now they're looking at replacing the word woman with person in what is called the Termination of Pregnancy Act, and it's all about making it more inclusive, which seems to have become a code word for excluding biological women from their own health care lately, Peter. Um, you know, instead mm. of worrying so much about whether we're going to potentially offend a very tiny, minuscule proportion of people that suffer from gender dysphoria, I think... The uh, pro-life groups would probably argue here maybe there needs to be more focus on protecting the rights of unborn babies in some of the um, some of the, the features of the legislation as it is when it comes to late-term abortions and uh, reviving babies who survive these kinds of procedures. But I think the most shocking thing here for me was that this is already in place in many states and territories, including here in New South Wales, which I didn't realise as well as South Australia, Western Australia and the ACT. They've already adopted this radical gender insanity. I'm just surprised it's not in um, places like the progressive uh, capital of the country in Victoria, in your own state, Peter. But it's only a matter of time. It'll come here. It'll come here. It'll come here. It's wrong. It's wrong. Women are being wiped out across the board. And you're right to make those other points about abortion laws more generally. Thank you both for your time, James and Caroline.